Hello and welcome. I'm Melinda Akinlami. Tonight, the Department of State Services uncovers alleged plots to cause breakdown of law and order in various parts of the country, including the nation's capital, Abuja. Police declare lawyer to outlaw indigenous peoples of Biafra if I age your fall wanted. President Buhari commends Nigerian army on its ongoing war against insurgency in the northeast and other security threats across the country. And panel leading impeachment inquiry against U.S. President Donald Trump says it has overwhelming evidence of misconduct and obstruction against him. On business news tonight, World Bank country director at Nigeria tasks federal government and private sectors potential in the country's economic development. And on sports news tonight, more problems at the Athletics Federation of Nigeria as some board members tell the president to step down. The Department of State Services, DSS, says it has uncovered plots by some groups to cause a breakdown of law and order in various parts of the country, including the nation's capital, Abuja. According to the DSS, the arrangement is to instigate protests, max action and violence with a view to causing anarchy and destabilizing the country in the major cities across the geopolitical zones in the coming weeks. A statement from the DSS is advising parents as well as heads of academic and public institutions to rein in their wards so they do not allow themselves to be used to cause trouble. Part of the statement reads, considering the implications of these on public safety and national security, the service and other sister agencies are at alert and will ensure that peace and security are maintained in all parts of the country before, during and after the festive period. No abiding citizens are equally encouraged to go about their normal businesses without fear. Besides the suspected security threat, the Anambra State Police Command has declared the lawyer to the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, Mr. Ifanye Jofo, wanted. And this is in connection with the killings of two officers of the command by persons suspected to be members of the outlawed group. The Assistant Commissioner of Police, Oliver Abe, and his colleague, Joseph Akubo, were set ablaze by their assailants. Make your way into this community in the Kusigo local government area of Anambra State and you can hear a pin drop. Community is deserted and also left in ruins. Two officers of the Nigeria Police Force were killed here and these burnt houses are allegedly the aftermath of the deadly attack. Apart from killing my area commander and one other officer, they abducted one of my inspectors who was rescued yesterday during the ongoing operation yesterday at the scene of the incident in the neighborhood. And in the process of rescuing that one, the inspector, about eight suspects of the IPOP members were arrested by my men. It was a combined operation between my men, the military, and other services. Home of one barrister, if I age of four, who is a legal counsel to the proscribed group, was also set on fire. Other buildings around were not spared. When a whole very senior officer came, maybe without arms, to make peace in his own lo locality, where he resides and is murdered in cold blood and burnt down, there are men under him who are gallant and who are able to even go to any war. They are bound to react. But what I'm saying is that if they said it was IPOB and they came to, uh, it was Ifanye, Barista Ifanye that uh, Ejofo that invited them. They should have handled Ifanye Ejofo squarely. Because they told me that there were those officers that came that started burning those places. Yes. But my uncles and my aunties, they are crying now that those officers came and started burning everywhere. At the police headquarters in Oka, the brief commission of police recaps what triggered the crisis. It declares Mr. Ifa in age of four wanted. I would like Nigerians to know that as we speak, Barista Age of Four, an IPOP member and his cohorts have been declared wanted by the command. And I will seek the cooperation of law abiding Nigerians from north, south, east, and west that wherever they find this individual, they should report to the nearest police station 
or any other security agency for possible arrest and prosecution based on the rules and laws of Nigeria. The community is now calm, but the earlier charge atmosphere affected movement as residents still fear police arrest or renew clashes. Staying with security issues, the president has commended the Nigerian army in its ongoing campaign against insurgency in the Northeast, as well as other operations across the country. President Muhammadu Buhari, who was speaking at the annual Chief of Army Staff Conference in Kaduna, expressed delight that the army has keyed into his administration's vision of transforming the military into a modern fighting force. He also pledged his government's continued support to ensure the army attains greater heights. The Chief of Army Staff's annual conference is usually a platform that provides the Nigerian Army leadership an opportunity to appraise its activities within the year, assess its performance, and identify its shortcomings so they can make informed decisions for the coming year. The presence of the President is a morale booster. Also present are the former Head of State, General Yakubu Goan, service chiefs, the host governor Nasir El Rufai and other senior retired and serving military officers. In line with the theme, the chief of army staff says the army is working towards self-sufficiency through local manufacturing of military hardware. We are delighted to showcase to Mr. President our innovative and inventive products so far achieved through robust research and development efforts in the drive towards building our own military industrial complex. Governor El Rufai commends the Nigerian Army and other security agencies in the efforts to tackle the various forms of security threats that have bedeviled the nation. The Nigerian Army helped restore peace and stability in the Southern Kaduna Senatorial District by the establishment of forward operation base in that area. Number two, the Army helped in no small way in decimating the capacity of cattle rustlers and cattle operating in this state and in surrounding states. In his keynote address, President Buhari applauds the relentless efforts of the armed forces in securing the territorial integrity of the nation, especially the heroes of war. No, please sit down. Please remain seated. The president pledges his government's resolve to continue to support the army, including the efforts to improve the welfare of the soldiers. I am highly impressed with the conduct of operations that continue to flesh out the terrorists from their enclaves. Let me, at this point, reiterate our government's resolve to do everything within its constitutional power to ensure the security and safety of law-abiding citizens. We are aware of some of the challenges, particularly in the areas of training, manpower, and barracks infrastructure. From the Chief of Army Staff's conference, the President commissions the rehabilitated 44 Nigerian Army Reference Hospital in the state capital. The hospital, established in 1944 to cater to the health needs of military personnel, has been providing medical services for personnel, their families and the civilian populace within Kaduna and its environs. And now to maritime security. Members of the Senate Joint Committees on Marine Transport and Finance, as well as Navy, are kicking against the protection of the country's waterways by an Israeli firm. They made their position known at an investigative hearing in the nation's capital, Abuja, on the activities of a private security firm and other security agencies. Um, chairman, co -chair, the Senate Committees on Navy and Finance are holding this investigative hearing into the activities of a private security firm, Ocean Marine Services Limited, and other security agencies at the Safe Anchorage area. OMSL is alleged to be collecting illegal fees for securing vessels at Lagos ports, amounting to 263 billion naira. Private security firm OMSL, which is at the center of the controversy, says its operations in the Safe Anchorage area is not illegal. 
as it provides patrol boats to the Nigerian Navy to secure the country's waterways. For the records, SA operations are not illegal. Its establishment follows due process, and it is not and cannot be a threat to national security, <coughs> knowing that it's being operated by the Nigerian Navy, the custodian of maritime security in Nigeria. If Nigerian Navy has so fit to keep re-establishing its need to give a third-party contractor the work, its own statutory duties, we don't have a problem with that, but Nigerian Navy should pay for it. Vessel owners should not be made to pay for a service that government should provide. But That's tempers begin to flare between the MDNPA also, um, and committee member Senator so Betty Apiafi. If vessel owners are being charged, it means that they are being overcharged. Mm -hmm. So how can we determine if we are being overcharged if we haven't made any comparative analysis? It's well, abso absolutely important. Very important we'll provide you with that data, but... Be I mean, there is no, there's no basis we, for the argument. Distinguished Senator, you should not speak to us and say we have no basis. We're an organization that have thought through our decision. We, we, we will take exception to people making reference to a decision of an organization that has no basis. If the basis do not sit uh, with the distinguished no. Senator, that is fine. But and I'll tell you, if the crux of the matter is ease of doing business, like you've emphasized, yes. the crux of the matter is... Uh, making sure that Nigeria is competitive within the West African region. Mm -hmm. What are the comparisons? We are not making case for any person. The committee chairman oh, wades in and senators yeah, question the capacity of the Navy to, to, to secure the country's waterways. The Navy is overwhelmed. Let me put it straight. And unfortunately, Nigeria has not been able to budget for the Navy to meet their requirement. But at the end of the year, committee members note the existence of a contract with an Israeli firm to safeguard the nation's waterways, a contract they do not approve of. Are you aware it's an Israeli company? Sir, I'm aware that there's a contract like that ongoing and that facilities are being provided. Are they providing security for us or not? Are they carrying arms or not? The, the vessels they are providing for us have not arrived in Nigeria, but there will be weapons on those vessels. Uh -huh. This investigative hearing has thrown up more questions than answers, such as why is an international security firm contracted to guard Nigeria's waterways? Why is the Navy not properly funded to protect the waterways to the extent that it has to rely on private indigenous security firms? The Joint Committee is expected to get answers to these questions at the end of the investigation and present a report to the Senate on the way forward. In part two after the break, we look at the legal status of smart card readers and INEX push for Electoral Offences Commission. And we're being joined by the Chairman Partners for Electoral Reforms, Mr. Eze Wagu. <laughs> 